Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the demo uh, by Julia Silos uh, in the, our FALC general meeting today uh, for February. Let me quickly show, uh, give, give, give an introduction about Julia. So here. Yes, I, I saw Julia's uh, work in uh, Viewpoint Gallery. So this, especially this work, uh, which was uh, of, uh, in the 17 mile drive. And I told uh, Janki, uh, we should have Julia showing uh, the demo to us. She makes very complicated subject into very simple. And also we wanted someone who, is, who can do the plein air painting. So we haven't uh, had plein air artists showing the work so far for us. Uh, it's, we are very glad to have Julia showing us the work and about her. So it's very interesting. So, uh, so Julia is an impressionist artist and she's studied art and that shows in her work. And she's a very renowned uh, plein air artist and she's won many awards. And also she's part of the, the viewpoint gallery where I got to know her and she's part of many other galleries. Uh, so it's it's very it's our privilege to have Julia showing us the work today, and uh, and Julia will be showing her some of the work she has already created, and she's also going to show one work as a demo, and uh, so we are going to learn a lot from that. So feel free to ask any questions during the demo, and uh, so it, it's very exciting. So it's it's the first time for Julia to show the demo uh, live on a, on 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 this uh, virtual environment. But she will, uh, I think, but she's already a pro. So I saw her already setting it up. So it'll be easy for her to show it now. Okay, with that, so let me stop sharing. So to you, Julia. Hello. Um, first thing um, I was asked to show was some of the paintings that I've done. I love painting outdoors on location. Um, been a little limited the last uh, 10 months because I can't get out with anybody. I normally do plein air events all over the country and uh, they were all shut down. I've done the Carmel one uh, 12 times, but I think we're gonna have it this year. So that's great. Um, I was a designer and retail designer for 40 years. So I, I got to use my artwork and uh, did renderings and illustration and graphic design. But I finally got my kids through college and now I can paint outdoors. So um, let's see, how are we gonna show this? Um, this is one of the scenes, when I do the plein air demo, this was done um, from uh, Santa Teresa Park. And what I like about this one is the colors go way back and get blue, which invites you into the painting. So the painting I'm gonna do today will utilize this effect. Uh, this was, uh, I think, a studio painting, but I don't remember. <laughs> um, this big one, now this is big for plein air. Plein air is usually smaller because you have to work in two to three hours. This is Elkhorn Sound. Pardon me? Anyway, this has the same effect. Um, the, the blued colors in the distance from our atmosphere here on Earth and it pulls you back into the paintings. And the, the eucalyptus trees, which I love, are almost silhouettes in this one. Uh, this one was done, this was actually done on location up in Port Angeles, Washington State for the Port Angeles Plain Air event. So this was done on location out with the bugs and the water and the wind and all of that. So this was done in about three hours. Okay, I work with a very limited palette and as I start doing the demo, I'll show you that. Okay, this one was done for um, a plein air event that was in Nova Scotia, but I did it here and had to videotape it. So this was done along Runnymede, which is next to Kenyatta Road in Woodside. And what we're gonna do today is very similar to this. I love the golden hills and the grasses and up here, the grasses. And again, a big strong silhouette of the eucalyptus tree. And then lastly, 
is my cat. <laughs> something a little bit more. Um, something I, I did some animals in December, my own pets. Uh, this was actually from a photograph, but uh, that's about as realistic as I ever get. Okay. Oh, here's one more. Yeah. I'm uh, on the board for the Monterey Bay Plain Air Group, and this was down at Point Lobos. Um, and again, you can see that the rocks in the distance are blued down, so you move back in the plane. Okay. So now we need to switch to my palette. How do you do that? Okay, this is nice. Any any questions anyone has on uh, looking at the paintings? They are all beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> They're very beautiful. They're very beautiful. Um, I paint what's called a la prima. So um, if you're doing traditional studio portraits, you would do a, a grise, I think it's called griselle, um, a, a, a grage study or a sepia study of the figure, and then put your color on in layer after layer of thin glazes. I don't work that way. When you're out plein air painting, you've got to get it and you've got to get it fast because the light's changing. Um, can you switch to, yes. I'm not looking at myself when we show the palette? Yes, yeah, I'm going to remove Okay. I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, Julie, do you use canvas board or do you use canvas? Uh, canvas board. Board. If you're using a canvas, stretch canvas, let's see if I can show you what happens. Um, well, I don't know if you can see. When we switch over, you'll be able to see what happens. The light shines through it mm -hmm. um, when you've got it out on the easel and you can't work on it. Also, it's really difficult to move them in and out of where you're painting. You have to put them into something. A French easel will carry them on the back, um, but usually I use a box of some kind that I've made to slide the panels in. And I use a variety. Uh, this one is a new cheapy one I just got at Michael's. We'll see how it works. Okay, can we switch me over? Yeah. There we go. Oh, Thanks. much better. So I'm not looking at myself. Um, this one is a cheap one. Windsor Newton makes a really nice archival board. Um, this one, they come white. And as you can see, I've got it toned already. So I use a thin wash of a cat orange or um, a lizard, just so there's, I'm not working on a stark white board. Um, so the first thing I do, um, well, I'll quickly say what my colors are. I have a few extra colors here that I sometimes don't use. Titanium white. This is Naples yellow pale, which is showing up as very yellow, but it's not, it's more golden. Then there's a lemon yellow and a cad yellow. Ignore that one. This is cad orange. And this I think is Scarlet Lake, which I hardly ever use. This is alizarin crimson. And this is ultramarine and then cerulean. And then my cheater color over here is uh, gray violet, which is really nice for toning down things. Uh, this back in the back is uh, cobalt, which again, I, I don't usually use. And I don't even know what this is. <laughs> it's just something I squeezed out. So you really only need uh, nine pigments, uh, a warm and cool of yellow, red and blue, and then white and um, the Naples pale. So to start, I, usually run around with a camera and uh, sort of bracket what I'm going to paint. I don't do sketches. I've been doing this a long time and I probably should do a sketch, but I don't. I figure it all out kind of as I'm going. So I mix a thin mixture, very thin and watery. I'm using um, odor-free uh, terpenoid, or I think this one is made by Mona Lisa. And it, you can use it inside, it's, it's not really toxic. So the first thing I do is I always, I'm, I'm actually gonna use both of these images. I'm gonna use this 
design, but I'm gonna put this little bit in the back instead of this hill, which is kind of wacky, but that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I do usually is put in my horizon line. And again, because this is wet, I can erase, which is very handy. So when you're working a la prima, which is what we're doing, and the mantra is thin to thick, dark to light. So it's sort of the opposite of how you would um, work with watercolor. So I, I have this great big shape in the middle, which I really like. I'm just sketching it in where it will go. But I'm gonna pick up this opening over here and have that kind of there. And then I've got this pathway that um, I'm gonna have it run off the page, which is a little odd, but that's what we're gonna do. And then I've got the dark bushes from in here. And then I've got the hill in the back, but I've got this shape. Does that make sense that I'm mixing the two images? Okay, and here we've got that hill. And then we've got the mountains in the back. I wanted to include the mountains so you can see how the, um, the color makes it go back in space. Okay, so that's my composition. That's as simple as it gets. Then once I've got that laid in, I start blocking in my dark. So I'm gonna use a, a brush that's got a better edge. I'm using a filbert. <laughs> and all my brushes get worn down and I use the edge. So now I'm going to make the paint much thicker and darker. I'm gonna make it just a really nice rich dark. It's still kind of purple. So now I just start laying in my darks. I don't know if you can see, I'm using the edge of the brush. And I'm, I don't know which of these. Eucalyptus, I painted eucalyptus a lot, so I sort of know what they do. And when you're doing landscapes, it's important to pay attention to what, how the trees really grow. If you look, this is a pine tree. This is a eucalyptus tree. And these are... Uh, I don't know, probably acacias or something. So these are sort of round and these have pointy tops. So you, um, I need to determine which um, trees are which and where they're going. So. And I haven't really quite decided that yet. So that's my biggest dark. And there's this shape here, which I like. The sun's coming from that side. So my shadows are all gonna be going across. And on the trees, this side is gonna be much darker. And then I've got a bush down here, which I like. Two bushes and then this shape. So I'm putting on paint, but it's not very thick. I don't know if you can see how thin that is. And then I've got this little ridge of these guys up here. Okay, make that a little higher, a little bit more impressive. So that's very thin paint right now. I'm not happy with that brush. I started forcing myself to use some flats. I think they give a nice, interesting effect. Julia, what are you using to clean your brush every time? Paper towel. Oh, this is this is turpinoid. Um, um, this is another brand. It's a little cheaper. It's Mona Lisa. They carry it at um, Michael's and it works fine. Some artists use some mediums um, like 
liquid. And I just found it takes too much time. I like just, okay, so now I've added yellow to my puddle of paint. And so now I'm making a very dark green, very dark. So you can see how dark that is. I'm really layering in dark. I'm hoping we'll have time for me to put the sky in because the sky is what actually shapes the trees. So there's dark underneath the, these bushes and sort of dark back there. And then this isn't gonna get too much darker. Okay, I, I keep the same puddle and I start working to the side of it to add lighter tones. So I've just added lemon yellow and a little bit of cerulean. And maybe you can see how what the different green I just got. It's much lighter. There we go. And it's, it's important to um, mix up the greens. You don't want the whole thing to look like it just came right out of the tube. And that needs a warmer yellow. So the cad yellow is much warmer than the lemon. I'm adding some of that. There we go. <clears throat> and Julia, these are uh, Winsor Newton? Please. Pardon me? No. The um, Winsor Newton is too expensive for me. I use um, Georgian or Utrecht. I love Utrecht paint. Okay. And you know, you can go, Utrecht is now owned by um, Dick Blick, but they're still carrying the, the Utrecht paint. Uh, I, I sometimes use the Windsor Newton boards, but their paint is, I mean, I know for watercolor, you can't beat Windsor Newton, but for oil, I find this, I buy great big tubes. I'll show you how, the other brand is uh, Georgian. I use these huge big tubes because I'm taking them out in the field with me. Um, I also use a lot of food. I like to see the paint. Um, I'm painting with oil paint and I want it to look like oil paint. So back here, we've got some soft colors. Up here, we've got this, that's the wrong color. Okay, up in the top of eucalyptus, it's always got sort of an orange tone. That's a little too orange. So I'm really just focusing on sort of the big shapes. And then as I work the canvas, um, the shapes will get more refined but I like the freshness of the big brush. Okay, I'm gonna add some of this in. It's so nice to watch you painting, uh, Julia. <laughs> Uh, Julia, one more question. Yes. So do you, uh, because because you're starting from darkest and then working towards the lighter shades, do you try to preserve the dark, darker shades wherever it's necessary or you add on later on? Um, they, should, they come through. Okay. They will. You know, I'm, I'm mixing it on the panel. 
I don't know if you can see how that's picking up from underneath. Right, right. No, on the on the painting itself, uh, I, I see that you are trying to preserve the the darker. Uh, yeah, I, I edges the, of the the paint. darks are the darks, and I want them to be there. Okay. So yeah. This is a little weird using two different images. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't normally do this, but I do change things a lot. So I'm, I'm going to make that more of sort of a, a grayish pinky color. And that's when I use this wonderful purple. It's just wonderful. I don't mean, see what it just did to my color over here. And some white. Yeah, there we go. So that goes back. So it's a little more muted and lighter. Okay, what do I want to do here? Okay, I'm going to put in some of the grasses to determine what this pathway is. But first, I'm going to put some color next to the pathway. And you can see how red that is back up in there. Probably poison oak. So that's going to pick up that reddish tone. Reds, this particular red is very strong. So I might have overdone it, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I did overdo it. Oh well. But nobody knows what I'm seeing, so I can do whatever I want. See how that's mixing? You can see that my underpainting, those lines, I just paint right over them because they're so thin. It, um, by thin, there's not a lot of pigment in it. I have a question here from someone. <clears throat> yeah. I want me to ask uh, that what's the trick for eucalyptus trees? The trick. Look at the shapes. Um, they have these flat umbrella shapes. Uh, they're tall and they have air holes. And hopefully I'll get a chance to get those air holes in so you can see how a eucalyptus becomes a eucalyptus because of those air holes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, now I've got hillside to do. Oops, I just turned it green. I didn't mean to do that, but it's a good color, so I'm going to use it over here.
Okay, these up here are, they're dark, but I need to make them considerably lighter than this dark. And again, that's because I want them to go back in space. And I'm going to put some over here too. I've probably got a little too much color in that. But the only way to find out is put color next to it. Now, as I'm coming down, I'm starting to shape these bushes. I'm also lifting up a lot of paint, which I don't want to do. So I'm sort of looking at that. be a little more color in it. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Have you guys heard of the uh, Peninsula Outdoor Painters? It's a group of painters. They've been painting together, I don't know how long. Uh -huh. um, and most of them are from San Mateo, Palo Alto. Um, and it's it's just a bunch of painters. And they there's a, a website and we are doing some shows but it's just open to anybody that feels like going out and painting and joining them. Oh, that's great. We've been looking for some opportunity like that. Actually, last year we had planned, I think two years back, actually, we couldn't, it was raining and we couldn't go. And then we haven't been able to plan. So we have been thinking of having a plain year uh, session sometime. Uh, yeah, it would be good to see how to do it because we don't, none of us in the, in Falk have experience in doing that. So we should. Uh, well, in the, um, hmm. Are you familiar with the uh, Los Gatos group? They uh, go out, I they think they, every, uh -huh. gosh, Monday? Monday, I think. Uh -huh. The uh, Peninsula ones, they go out every Tuesday. Normally, obviously they haven't been able to, mm -hmm. but normally they would be going out every Tuesday. Yankee, we should look at something like this next time. It'll be very good for us to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be great. Okay, so. These little bits I'm cutting in um, give shape to the bushes. So now I'm going to put in that Beautiful purple hill. If I can get the right color. There you can see how the little air holes, all of a sudden it starts to look like a eucalyptus. I'm 
and I'm adding more white to this color as you get closer down to the ground. Let's make that go up more. And I'm picking up a whole lot of green, which I don't want to do. Over here, you can see this neat little hole. I like that. So we're going to give it a little hole. And then this opens up. This is a pine tree. So it's got some things going on too. Julia, do you have a, the list of uh, materials you use listed somewhere? Uh, um, I can send it to the group. I do have it. Okay. I, I, when I do a class, I have a, a whole sheet with everything on it. Okay, it would be good if you can share it and I'll share it with the group. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the mountain in the back is pretty flat. Oops. So I'm going to give it just the slightest bit of difference. The light's coming from over here, so this side of the mountain is going to kind of cast some shadow on it. Just the slightest little bit. And the other side is wider. Do you um, always, sorry, do you, yes, do you always uh, paint um, the, the foreground uh, things in the foreground first and then go towards the back? No, I go darkest to lightest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of times yes, uh, people start from the like, sky and the mountain and come towards the things in the foreground well, that's side because you're putting in the lightest things first but with this you're you're it's exactly opposite so as you can see i'm putting in lighter colors now okay and the the white and anything um it's it's opaque so i'm not using the whiteness of the board i'm using the whiteness of the paint whereas if it's your watercolorist that's got to come through from underneath that makes sense yes okay uh but what about the you know the the sky coming through the trees yeah is it won't it be difficult after the if you do it last or do you think it is okay uh you have to make sure the paint's pretty opaque mm -hmm. and this is thin so see how i can go right over that i'm going to yeah. use the quality of the paint um, so i've got that's fading off pretty good Um, I'm going to create, I like the clouds up here, so I'm going to have to clean off a section of my palette, but before I do that, I'm going to put some yellow up there, because I've got this already mixed. So the brighter colors are forward in the painting. The more intense hues are, are towards the front. And of course it gets um, bluer and grayer as you go back.
There, that gives it a little color. Okay, now I gotta clean this mess up. A lot of artists don't do this. They'll keep the whole thing full of color, but I run out of space. This is a sheet of plexiglass, white plexiglass, and it's cut to fit in my plein air easel. I use a French easel. I'm very old school that way. I sit when I paint because I have two artificial knees and a 10 rods in my back, or <laughs> two 10 inch rods in my back. So I sit um, and a French easel lets me do that. And this is clamped on with a bungee cord and I've got my paper towels bungeed underneath and a plastic container with my brushes. I've got everything I need. And it won't blow over because it's heavy. There we go. I'm cleaning a space to get, so I can do some white and my clouds. How much time do I have? Yeah, we have time. Uh, it's just 8.20, so we have another 25 minutes. Oh, perfect. Okay, I gotta get rid of this green. I don't want a green sky. So I'm cleaning out my brush. I usually use the same brush the whole time. You'd never know it if you saw how many brushes I've got. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna go kind of opposite what I said before. When I'm doing clouds, I actually put the white clouds in first. So a little of that salmon pink is, is shining through, which gives it, um, I don't know, just a little bit of vibrance. I haven't paid too much attention to the shape of this because it's really not the center of interest and uh, it's not important to the composition. Um, it, this is the focus. Okay, now I've got to start shaping. So I've got just pure white paint because that's what's coming in around this tree. And I keep this in my hand. What was that? See, it's picking up the paint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Questions? The color in the, uh, the, the container doesn't come into the, uh, come in with the painting. I don't know how to say this. It. Is yeah. liquid in your, in that no. little container? <laughs> no, that's just yeah. dirty. Uh-huh. Even I was thinking the same, Ishaka, whether that color comes into the... But Actually, this is really yeah, cool. but it doesn't make it uh, before we started. Mm -hmm. And um, what I end up, oh, okay. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? <laughs> see the thickness at the yeah. bottom? That's oh, my goodness. So much. So <laughs> I, I pour it in, and when it's in my car, it shakes it around, and the particles of paint end up in the bottom. And this will be clear after about a week. And I pour it back in and I use it. So I hardly ever throw anything away. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's me. It's Where different I... from the other medium. Yes. yes. It's oil. So here you can see I'm, I'm just I'm dropping in some little air holes. And then it starts to look like a eucalyptus. Okay, now I'm going to put in some of the blue. I'm not sure what this is going to do. Eek, I don't want that. That's cobalt, which I never use. And I bought some today and I thought, yeah, let's see what that does. It's way too green. It's pretty, but it's not what I want. Okay. I think what I want is the cerulean. Oh, that's pretty green too, isn't it? There we go. This is way too colorful. So once you get that much on, it's kind of hard to get rid of it. You can see I'm mixing it right on the board. Get those soft edges. Julia, how long does it take for this painting to dry once it's done? Well, it depends on how thick you paint and how much white you're using. Um, white and the cad yellows take the longest because, um, I, well, I use them, they're the thickest. So, uh, I don't know, I've heard for it to truly be dry, like a year. But to handle it, you can handle it in like a week. So if you were to varnish it, you would do it after a year? or No, no. I, I just use um, retouch varnish. And it's a spray. Grumbacher makes a real nice one. So I can use, like on that cat painting, um, that painting was done about three weeks ago. And I varnished it last week. But retouch varnish can go on almost right away because you can work over it. Now here I've got a problem that's way too dark. So I have to lighten that. But first I'm going to work up here. And put some of these holes in here. So what two blues are you using right now? Uh, cerulean and ultramarine. Ultramarine, okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna have to deal with what I've got down here. I'm gonna have to lighten it considerably because it's, it's way too intense. I guess I could make the hill darker. See, that's the beauty of oil. I can do that. <laughs> Can't do that with watercolor. Well, I guess you can. When I first started painting outdoors um, with oil, well, I, I actually started with acrylic 
because I'd always painted outdoors with watercolor as a kid. And um, I had all these acrylics. So I decided, okay, I'll use acrylics. I hated it because they, they dried too fast. So I ended up with hard edges everywhere. There, that's much better, much better, much better, much better. And I couldn't control the colors. It just didn't mix the way I thought it should. So I switched to oils and uh, I love oils. And with this new medium, it's not like you're working with turpentine anymore. A lot of people can't stand the smell of turpentine. I did a trip to Italy to paint and that's all I could find when I got there was real turpentine. And the people I was with were ready to kill me because the whole car smelled. I'm gonna have to fix this over here. It's kind of weird. You can see I've changed the shape at the top of this tree because it's a pine tree. It's a different, it's a different kind. So it, it needs to be handled differently. And I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's not the center of attention. Whereas that is. Julia, we have five, 15 minutes. Okay. Or maybe 20 minutes also is fine, I think, because we can go till 8.50. So. Hmm. I'm getting close to done. I need to shape these a little bit and probably put a little bit more definition for that pathway. Mm, did we lose? I think you may be having a low battery message on your uh, iphone i think uh, is it low yeah because it's uh, it's not showing the camera anymore i think it should it's okay power low yeah you bless oh yeah now we are back yes mm. <laughs> i probably have about five minutes before it dies <laughs> i can move the cable but um that would take more time than we've got i think mm. So we're going to end this. <laughs> Julie, you've uh, conquered the myth that oil paints take too long. This oil painting was done in less than an hour, I think. Yeah. I think this is one of the recent demos we have seen where we could see the complete painting done in one demo, one sitting. So yeah, it's, it's been Beautiful. great. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's doable.
Julia, you don't use any oil, like linseed oil or anything with your painting? No, because that'll make it take way too long. Um, when I was doing studio work, yes, but I, I, I want it so I can work it. If you put that in, um, you can't layer the paint like I'm doing. You, oh, you would be, you would be creating thin layers, mm. which is uh, great if that's what you want. But I want this to be finished. Um, I'm. Uh, you you use the linseed oil if you're you know working on refining soft glazes, but I'm not doing that. I'm I'm going for it. This is called a la prima. I have a question. Uh, yeah. How did you choose to be uh, an artist of the impressionist style? Because uh, that's what I love. <laughs> I love, um, oh gosh, uh, the California Impressionists, um, the Sargent's Landscapes, um, William Went. Um, oh shoot, I can't think of names. I'm terrible with names. Ah, the Southwest Painter, um, Maynard Dixon. I love Maynard Dixon's work, love it. And I grew up, um, where we had lots of, I, I grew up in Kentucky and we had a big backyard. We could go wherever we wanted. And, and I was outside every day, you know, drawing and catching creatures and um, I want to be outside. And um, this allows me to do that. And, and I, I like the quality of the brushwork when it's, fast and and more spontaneous not overworked i'm about as far from a romantic style painter as you can get i like seeing the brushwork i like seeing that it's oil paint thank you I don't know, can you guys hear what my daughter's listening to downstairs? <laughs> it sounds like somebody's killing people. I don't know what she's listening to. No, it's fine. No. Okay. And I'm leaving that just a big, dark, simple shape. I like it. And I'm leaving this really loose over here. I am going to put some dark under these. That cat orange brings my dark alizarin, um, my ultramarine down. I mean, you see this wonderful color I'm getting. It's just a beautiful, it's dark. peculiar over here. It's a little too dark.
And you, Julia, you were mentioning you refer to the digital picture uh, than the print. Can uh, oh yeah, I normally if I'm working here, mm -hmm. I I use my um, I have an old desk. Um, I'm sorry, an old workbook computer, and um, the light that it gives me is really great. Um, so these prints, my daughter helped me do these on her her um, printer, my printer is terrible. So, but uh, these are pretty good to work from. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy with them. Thanks to your daughter, Vicky, uh, who helped you all, uh, these, all these things. They have to... <laughs> I have um, an older Mac that I use because I, um, I have the old Photoshop programs. I have the Creative Suites, it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't feel like paying for a monthly membership to get the upgrades. Yeah, I think many people are living with the old desktop because of Photoshop, actually. <laughs> because yeah. Of I use Photoshop and Illustrator. I do a lot of graphic design work for my gallery. And um, I'm not willing to give them all that money every month because mm -hmm. I use Photoshop Illustrator and um, Acrobat mm -hmm. and, and they all work seamlessly together and to rent them I don't even know what it costs but I'm not yeah. willing to do it. Yeah, if you have Illustrator I think I think it's maybe $40 I think just $10. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fifty two dollars a month. Uh, you, you can either get you can either rent them individually, but but just to get like two of them costs more than to get the whole suite of twenty apps. Yeah. That's fifty two dollars a month. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's a lot of money over. It here. really is. Considering the fact that I already have the programs and they work perfectly fine. Okay, I think I'm done. Wow, I think that's done. Wow. Beautiful. This is a little green. I could gray those down a bit, but I'm not going to mess with them right now. And I. Uh, <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. <laughs> Thank you. A painter who I just love, she always used to say, when in doubt, add a little orange. <laughs> so we'll add a little orange. Very beautiful. Yeah. Amazing, beautiful painting. I think we're yeah. done. Thank you. Thanks for showing us this technique. <laughs> so this is called a la prima, which means one fell shoot. Um, I'll hold that up so you can see it a little better. I think I will. Yes, yeah, very good. There, yeah, can you see better? Okay, let me take a second. Very, nice. very cool. One like that, one second. I want to put this. As, uh, yes. That's gorgeous. Thank how long you. Does that take, how long does it take to dry then, since you're not using any oil? Um, well, the oil's in the paint. Well, right. But I mean, no additional oil, like linseed or anything. Well, I um, eh, two to three days. I mean, when you do plain air vents, you wipe off the edges and you put it in a frame and it gets sold right then. Right. <laughs> So it's real wet and um, yeah, <laughs> again, it depends on, on how much white you're using and um, how thick you're putting the paint on. I put it on pretty thick on this one. So there's gonna be areas that are gonna take like two weeks before you can touch them. You can see I've got a big glob of paint there and back in here, but um, yeah, two weeks you'll be able to really touch it. But the um, Grumbacher spray, get it out. I think I will. Hang on. Hang on. Oh. This is what I use. It's Grumbacher Retouch Varnish Spray. So because it's retouch, you can use it and paint right over it. So if I wanted to come back to a painting that I'd finished, I can paint right over it. And you can paint right over it like the next day. It's wonderful stuff. And it does, it is varnished, so it does protect them. 
and it brings out um, sometimes these these darks where I've used a lot of the thinner will go dead. So if you give it a coat of that, it brings those back to life again. Um, you'll notice I use a lot of paint. Uh, it drives me crazy when I go out with a group and they have these tiny little gobs of paint. Um, it's oil paint, go for it. <laughs> Use lots of oil. So any other questions? These are filberts. I've been using filberts and some flats. Well, flats are brights. So I never know the difference. And when you're doing a big one, I use a great big club of a brush. Any other questions? Uh, any other questions? Uh, uh, is it possible to show the bottle that uh, the uh, the solvent that you used uh, to do it, which is instead of the turpentine oil? Yeah. Oops. They're not on me anymore. Hello. <laughs> okay. Yes. And it's called Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. Thank um, you. The brand, um, there's Gambasol, which mm -hmm. is really quite expensive. I never use it. And then the other brand is called Turpanoid. And it's in a white container with blue lettering. Turpanoid. Yeah, I, I heard of Gambasol, but you know, there, uh, but uh, you know, I don't, I've used it a couple of times, but yeah, you're right. It's more expensive. Yeah, and, and this, it's Mona Lisa, it's cheap. I bought it down in Santa Cruz at Lenz, I think it is, Lenz. Mm -hmm. um, I was down there for the Capitola Plain Air event and mm -hmm. I couldn't get Turpinoid, but they had this and I think it's great. We're fine. Thank you. Good. Okay, finally, we'll just, we'll just give a applaud for, uh, for the demo. So, Thank you. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, like if you send me an email, I can individually, I can send you the um, list of materials and I am willing to do a class outdoors uh, if we're allowed. Uh, the trick is you got to find a place that has a parking lot and a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I have some places that I go. Uh, actually, Arrestadero Preserve is a good one. So um, I, I can do class of like six or private if anybody's interested. Yeah, we, we, I'll be in touch with you on that. Uh, okay. Yeah, because and, we, and of course, we were doing classes earlier, but yeah, we had stopped it. Hopefully, we can restart soon and we'll, we'll do it as a fall group together. It'll be fun for us. Yeah, this. and the gallery is open. Uh, you just can't have very many. We can't have big parties in there right now. Hopefully, we will. We used to have first Fridays uh, for our art receptions, but we've got Debbie Baker, who showed uh, did a demo for you yeah, a yeah. week ago. Uh, she's one of our artists, and she paints as different from me as she possibly could. <laughs> Hers take hours and hours and layers and layers. And, well, she couldn't paint outside like I do, and I can't paint inside like she does. <laughs> so anyway, this is, how, this is a la prima, which is uh, a technique to use when you're outdoors, primarily. Okay. Thank you.